Today, we're talking about lead generation. How can you find clients for your Power BI business, specifically online lead generation, and why online conversations do not need to be awkward. Um, I know when I was starting out, then I was really concerned about this for one, the whole lead generation thing and selling and all that stuff. Now I have been able to, able to simplify it for myself and our students. For example, uh, one thing that I talk about selling is the best way to sell in these days is not to sell. Now this is of course part of our five step program inside our Power BI Consultant um, a program that we run. Uh, the first step is define your niche, second step is create your pillar stone story, and the third, fourth, and fifth are really milestones around lead generation. The third being get your first paid client, fourth is get your next paid client, and the fifth step is build a steady stream of clients. And they all uh, leverage lead generation uh, uh, you know, on top of the, the niche that you've established and the story that you have created. So this is the step we're talking about in lead generation, specifically online lead generation. Online lead generation is a great way to find clients and find potential clients. Uh, for one, with the COVID lockdown, that's pretty much the only option available. But even before COVID and I'm sure afterwards as well, online lead generation is going to be a great option available. Uh, LinkedIn is, of course, one of the most prominent tools used for online lead generation. But the challenge that I see here that uh, the mistake that I made and I, the mistake that I see a lot of other people uh, making this as well is, is that they make it really awkward. And the biggest lesson that I learned was that online conversations aren't really that different or shouldn't be that different than in-person conversations. Now, uh, typically on LinkedIn, it's so awkward because I get these weird messages which are salesy from the get-go. And this person reaches out, it's like, hey, we do this, this, this service and yeah, and you know, we do SEO optimization and your website looks like it sucks and we can help you. And I'm like, dude, what? Get out of here, right? You do not want to do that if you're trying to be a Power BI consultant, right? Don't start spamming people and sending these messages that, hey, I, I do Power BI, I can, I can help you. For one, please uh, establish a niche and target that niche. Don't go out there waving the Power BI flag. But even after that, think about it. So the example that I'm going to use is imagine if you're uh, looking for a date, right? And you go to a club and you meet somebody you're not gonna bend down on a knee and pull out the ring, would you? Now that would be really weird, but that's what people keep end up doing in online. And I'm like, oh, and hey, I did that too. So maybe I shouldn't be that upset, right? But I didn't get it. But once you get it, it's like, no, it's, it's not that different. It's not that different from in-person communication. So that first reach out cannot be this pushy sales message. Again, how are you gonna meet somebody in person? You're gonna say, hey, hello, hey, my name is Avi, or, or, you know, and, and find a connection point, right? I mean, to kickstart a conversation and then find a connection point, that's how in-person communication, communication works. And it's exactly the same way the online communication should work too. So once you've established your niche, you know the audience you're targeting after. And of course, it's a carefully selected niche because either you have some expertise or experience or something in that niche. You, there is some connection that you have. And that's gonna make conversations, the, the icebreaker, so much easier. So now you uh, find out people who fit that niche online, and let's say you make a goal of reaching out to 10 people every week or every month. Frankly, the number and the time doesn't matter. What matters most is the consistency. So you reach out to them on a consistent basis, and then again, just have these conversations just like you're talking to a real person. And it helps if you are genuinely interested in helping out people and not just desperate to find a, a contract or land another client. Guys, I've been there, but really desperation <laughs> drives people away. It, it, it's, yeah, it, it doesn't work, right? So be genuinely out there to help others. And by helping others, trust me, money wouldn't be a problem, you would be helped as well. So you, uh, you have a focus niche, you start that conversation, and again, LinkedIn is great because you can often find something in their profile and some common connection, it's like, oh, it could be same college, same company, or and of course you have that niche. So say, hey, I've been in this, this the finance sector for a long time, and just curious, uh, which tools, which BI tools have you used? By the way, 
including a question in there is a great way to keep the conversation going. And again, if you think about it, that's the same way in-person communications go too, right? I mean, I would ask you something, oh yeah, what did you, what did you do last week? Or something like that, right? So questions are a great way to go there. So again, don't make it weird. <laughs> don't start off with a pushy salesy message. Just try to have that conversation as if you were having it, as if the same way you would have it in person. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna, you know, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what happens when the conversation goes sideways. What happens when the person is not responding and that does make it awkward, right? How do you deal with that? All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, power on.